We're going to do problems 2 and 12, but we're again going to go to this thing. Number 2 here says, decide whether each labeled pair is an absolute maximum or minimum, a relative maximum or minimum, or neither. So, we're going to look at each labeled point, not pair. So look at A, B, C, D, E, and all those letters. So, let's actually just think about which one's the mac absolute maximum, which one's the absolute minimum, and go from that way instead. Eh, either way works. I'm changing my mind again. Let's just do A. Let's talk about A. A, if you look at this graph, does it look like the absolute lowest point possible? So that is the absolute minimum. Okay? B. B. Is B your absolute highest point? Uh, no, G is actually a little bit higher. So it's not an absolute max, but is it a relative max? Is it a hill or valley? Yeah. It is a hill. So this one is a relative max. Okay, C. C. Is that a highest or lowest point? No. Is it a hill or a valley? So this one is neither. D. Is that D, is that the highest or lowest point? No. But is it a hill or valley? It is a valley, so D is a relative min. Okay, we go to E. E. E is not the absolute max or min, but is it a hill or valley? It is a pointed hill, but a pointed hill is still a relative and a relative max. Relative max tells you it's a hill. Relative min tells you it's a valley. Okay, running out of space. Let's do F. F, it's not an absolute, but F is a relative minimum. And the last one, G. Well, that would be your absolute max if it was a solid dot. Since it's not a solid dot, meaning the point does not exist, it is not your absolute max, so it is also neither. It is not a hill, it is not a valley. Okay, It is your highest point, but it's the highest point that does not exist. So, this one does not have an absolute max. The absolute max would be right next to that G, but we don't give it the one right next to it. So you just say there's no absolute maximum. Okay, number 12. Number 12 looks like this right here. I want to, on number 12, it says, approximate the critical numbers, determine whether the function has a relative max or min, absolute max or min, or none at each critical number on the interval shown. So basically we find critical numbers and see if those critical numbers, what they are. Are they absolutes, relatives, what are they defining the critical numbers? So when we look at this graph, critical numbers or the derivative equals zero or does not exist. So if we look at this graph, do you understand right here at two, you have a slope of zero? Do you see right here at about five, you have a slope of zero? Do you have any points on this graph where the slope is vertical? You have no points where the slope on this graph right here on 12 are vertical. This one looks like it's about vertical, but we don't know for sure. So really, the only critical numbers are at 2 and 5. So my two critical numbers are x equals 2 and x equals 5. Those are my two critical numbers for 12. Now, looking at those two values, are they absolute maxes or mins? Are either of these values absolute max or min? Actually, yeah. Isn't 5 an absolute max or min? Yeah. Doesn't that look to the highest point on the graph? So x equals 5 is an absolute max. So x equals 5 is an absolute max. Now, wait, could that also be a relative max? Is it a hill? 
It's okay to be both. Absolute is more interpretive, but relative means the type it is. So it's a hill. So this is also could be called a relative max. Okay, It's an absolute max. It's the highest point, but it's also relative because it's a hill. Now look at number two. Is two, uh, it's not an absolute. This is, is it even a relative? Is it a hill or valley? No, it's just kind of like a stagnant spot. It kind of goes and flattens and goes back up again. That's nothing. It's neither. Okay. Now, does this graph, by the way, have any absolute min? No, because if you look, you can't see it very well, but these are open circles. And the two lowest points are open circles. Got it? You can have two absolute max and two absolute mins if they're both the same value. But here they don't even exist, so forget it. There is no absolute minimum on this graph. There aren't any relative minimums either because there's no hill, there's no valleys. All we had is one hill right there. Okay. Number 14. Number 14 is asking you to find critical numbers. So if I want to find critical numbers for 14, what I'm basically going to do is I'm going to derive it and set it equal to zero. Now, for some of you, do you want to do product rule? Actually, I would probably do something easier. Watch this. Isn't this pretty easy to do this? You don't have to. I just see it and go, I like that better. I don't know why, I just do. I like x to the fourth minus 4x squared instead of doing the product rule. Product rule would have worked. I like that better. So g prime, well, derivative of x to the fourth is pretty easy, 4x cubed. And derivative of negative 4x squared is negative 8x. So to find critical numbers, you just set that equal to zero. And solve it. You could use your calculator if it was a calculator test right now. But we can do this by hand. Do you see a GCF? 4x, leaving you x squared minus 2. Does that look right? And what do we do when we get there? Don't we set each piece equal to 0? So we have 4x equals 0, and we have x squared minus 2 equals zero. This one simply divide by four, x equals zero. There's one critical number. This one you add the two over. And then how do we solve when it's x squared equals two? We square root both sides. And some of you will forget this. Don't forget the square root. When you square both sides, it's plus or minus. There are actually three critical numbers. Zero, square root two, and negative square root two. Now, those critical numbers are possibly relative maxes or mins. We don't know for sure, but they could be. They could even be absolute maxes or mins. But we've got to do more information to find that. All they asked for were critical numbers. We're done. Those are critical spots we're going to kind of learn more about in the future.